Right now, we have Tracy Niimi of TN Photography joining us today, and he's going to teach us how to get photos and videos you want for your wedding ceremony. If you like videos just like this one, don't forget, check us out on YouTube at Eclipse Effect Events. And Tracy, let's see what kind of tips we have or advice you have for the ceremony. I like to say that there's five parts during the ceremony, five different things that you know, if you're to section the whole thing out, the processional, the beginning of the ceremony, the middle of the ceremony, the end of the ceremony, and the, you know, the recession one day when you exit. Think about the kinds of photos you want from those parts of the day, because if you don't do certain things, you might want certain photos, but if you don't do certain things, then I'm not going to get them for you. You know, if you want all of your ceremony photos to look like you're happy, then you have to look happy. You have to smile. If you got RBF, if you don't know what RBF stands for, go Google it, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. But you don't want to just have a whole ceremony full of RBF based photos. Like that's not what any of us want from our wedding day. So, you know, we cannot, we're not going to run up to you in the middle of your ceremony and remind you, hey, smile. You know, you have to try to remind yourself to do those things. So you have brides and brides or grooms and grooms. But for the sake of this, we're going to just call everything the traditional way. So I'm just going to refer to it as the bride coming in. When the bride's walking in, usually they either walk in with maybe their dad, maybe with both parents, maybe by themselves, whatever the case, that is a very big part of a wedding because that marks the beginning of the whole ceremony. The bride's walking in, this happens all the time. And I always tell my clients, try not to stress about it. If you do it, that's totally fine. But as much as possible, try not to just stare at your feet the entire time that you're walking in and look happy. And if you're going to be walking in with someone and you want that beautiful candid of you two looking at each other, like catching that moment of like the bride looking at the dad and you guys are having that little moment that you, you have to just make that happen. If you don't ever look at your dad the entire time that you're walking in, you're just not going to get that photo if that's what you want. But if that's what you want, make it happen. You get up to the front, the beginning of the ceremony is going to start. The officiant's going to ask, you know, who gives this bride to, um, you know, be wed, that sort of thing. Dad's going to say, you know, mother and I or whoever it is that's handing her off, hand them off. Do you want photos of you hugging your dad one last time? Then you got to make sure you do that. Do you want the groom to come over, shake your dad's hand, give him a hug too? Make sure you practice those things during the rehearsal so that you get those shots. Now the ceremony is actually starting. You're getting into the middle of the ceremony. You're getting into the ceremony is going to start going. What kind of photos do you want from your ceremony? Well, most people, when they think of a ceremony photo, it's the bride, the groom, the wedding party, if you have one, the officiant, yes. But think about what, what are the bride and groom doing in that photo? Usually they're looking at each other and smiling, right? You know, because they're getting married. But you know what happens? Who's the one that's talking? The officiant. So what do we all naturally do when someone's talking? We look at the person that's talking. Do you want all of your ceremony photos to be of you looking at your officiant or do you want your photos to be of you looking at each other so you gotta keep that in mind too during the middle of the ceremony like you know as much as possible keep your eyes on each other as much as possible and do you want to be hand in hand in your photos or do you want to just be kind of standing spaced apart you know not knowing what to do with your hand i usually tell my brides and grooms like just be hand in hand from the beginning unless you're having like a traditional catholic wedding and a catholic church just be hand in hand from the beginning because then it gives us an opportunity to get that shot from all the different angles and whatnot because then that's we have more time to do that instead of you joining hands only when you're exchanging vows or something like that then during the middle of the other thing that happens during the middle of the ceremony wedding rings that's the one part of the wedding day of the of the ceremony anyway this middle part of the ceremony that actually like it's something that's different so this is more for the photo side of things but when you exchange rings don't you know, maybe walk through with your officiant. A lot of officiants nowadays actually make this recommendation and they do this and they make this part of their wedding days. But it's when you exchange the rings, there's usually a little bit of a repeat after me, you know, even if it's something as short as, you know, like, you know, with this rule, with this wedding ring, I be wed, whatever it is, if you know, whatever it is that your officiant does, when you're doing it, don't just slip the ring on and then go back to holding hands. Give us a chance to catch that moment. So slip the wedding ring, wedding ring halfway on to their finger, look them in the eye, your other half in the eye, and then do your repeat after me, then slip it all the way on. And it gives your photographer and your videographer more chance to catch this one moment that's actually different than you guys just staring at each other, holding hands the whole time. Now it's at the end. The end of the ceremony is what, right? It's the kiss. 
And this is the part that, oh man, when I first started it off, it was so painful. And that's when I learned real quick that I need to actually make it a point to make sure people know this. But when you think about the picture that you get for the wedding kiss, do you want a picture of the groom and the bride with their hands on their sides just leaning in for a kiss? Or do you want to have, you know, a photo? I'm talking, you know, speaking to my clients, saying, do you want your photo to be of the two of you embracing and having this beautiful moment? Well, if you want that, which is, I think, what most people want. You got to do it. So I usually tell people, practice the kiss at home before you actually get married. You know, go in the bathroom. Get all tangled up in each other and figure out where do you want to place your hands on each other. You know, the traditional male, the, the traditional groom, has a pretty usually has an easier job where it's like, put your hands around her waist, pull her in nice and close, and make sure you're using two hands. If you only use one hand and you have the other hand at your side, it looks like you're kissing your auntie hello, and that's kind of lame. So <laughs> don't do that. Um, but for the you know the traditional bride up to you and where you want to place your hands you know figure out what you want do you want to place that on their face or on their neck over the shoulders give them a hug too whatever it is whatever it is you decide to do just figure it out what you want to do so when it comes to the actual moment during that portion especially for people that are nervous about kissing in front of their family or their friends just figure out where you're going to put your hands on each other before practice it and now when it actually comes to that moment, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to stress about it. You don't have to have that anxiety and you're good to go. And then you're going to get the photos that you want from that moment. The other thing is when you kiss, kiss straight. No Hollywood twisting into each other and all of that sort of stuff. Because usually we're shooting right down the aisle and you twist. And then all of a sudden your kiss is the back of somebody's head. Um, and that's no fun either. So keep the kiss straight and also keep it long. No pecs, no pecs allowed. I tell that to all my clients, no pecs allowed. Three seconds minimum. And if anything, three seconds minimum and at least one time, obviously minimum. But don't be afraid to kiss more than once. Kiss a couple times. Make out in front of your family, whatever it is. Make sure you have, you know, where you're going to place your hands on each other and you're going to get that golden moment from your ceremony that highlights the whole ceremony. And then lastly, you have your exit. If you have plans to have your guests throw things or blow bubbles or throw flowers or whatever you know during that moment as you guys are walking out you know take that moment exact the same way as when you come in think about what kind of photos you want as you leave you know do you want to be looking at each other laughing smiling or are you going to just get pictures of just staring at your feet the whole time you know so at the end of the day think about what kind of photos you want from your day what are the things that you need to do as a client to get the photos and the videos that you want and note all of those things in the back of your mind when you're having your ceremony practice them during your rehearsal so that when it comes time for your ceremony your photographer or your videographer are going to get all of those moments for you and it's going to look the way that you want it to look at the end